You're listening to the Ben Dominich Podcast, brought to you by Fox News. Through the tortured minds of the Washington foreign policy blob, the election of Joe Biden was supposed to be about restoring America's status in the world. The dark years of Donald Trump, where tweets could send people rushing to cable news to blast the administration for reckless behavior, coddling dictators, or failing to respect their precious norms, that would all be something in the past. One CNN executive mused, these images will inspire our friends and shake our foes. He was talking about the inaugural fireworks display. Three years on, how silly they all look. The professional diplomats, the self-described experts, the firm hands of foreign policy expertise. They've given us a world that seems ready to spin off its axis. In Afghanistan, a debacle, a bungled retreat that betrayed those who worked with us abandoned our military resources to our enemies, and ultimately got Americans killed. In Ukraine, a meandering approach marked by naivete toward both Moscow and Kyiv and an unwillingness to give the Ukrainians the military tools they need to end the war quickly, instead sending them on a path toward quagmire. In Asia, an unwillingness to back our allies with firm support to balance against a China that seems dangerously unstable internally and bent on expansion that could give them control over global trade. On the American border, historic highs of migrants from all over the world, including those on the terror watch list, and we only know about, of those about the handful that we catch. And now, in Israel, the most deadly single day for the Jewish people since the Holocaust. A day that saw the murder of innocent men, women, and children, a barrage of rockets and targeted assassinations, of young women raped near the dead bodies of their friends, then paraded bloody through the streets. All this just weeks after the White House's Jake Sullivan, speaking to a conference held by The Atlantic, the media mouthpiece of the foreign policy blob, announced that the Middle East is, quote, quieter today than it has been in two decades. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Consider the possibility we are led by idiots. Now, that idiocy is getting people killed. The White House was out there with their spin. Despite the obvious connections, they claim there is no direct line between this administration's coddling of Iran, releasing $6 billion to them, and dropping the sanctions on the Central Bank of Iran as part of a hostage deal. They claim that money is only to be used for food and medicine for the Iranian people. Now who's being naive? We all understand how money works. Iran normally has to budget ahead, spending its small reserves on food and medicine months in advance. Now, it's free to spend all that money however it pleases, in this case, supporting terrorist proxy groups all around the world, particularly Hamas. Evil men will always exist. They will do evil things. America should not be in the business of helping them bring evil down on our allies. Not with six billion, not with one cent and help them, we did. Rob Malley, the U.S. Special Envoy to Iran, lead negotiator of the original Iran deal under Obama, is currently suspended on suspicion of helping the Iranian regime infiltrate our systems to their own devices. We're only just beginning to learn the degree to which Iran was able to manipulate this entire situation to their benefit and to the detriment of the world. President Joe Biden, his diplomatic team, this White House, and the extremist anti-Semitic faction of the left that Democrats tolerate and promote, all must answer for the reality they've helped create, one where the enemies of Israel are coddled, funded, and enabled. There will be more to say on all of this, and what we should expect will be bloody and violent weeks to come. But remember who in politics and in the media lied to you about who was serious and who was not, about who could keep us out of war and whose weakness invited the state of the world today. As Ronald Reagan said in the midst of the Cold War, we cannot play innocence abroad in a world that is not innocent. We face a world in crisis. So who will do what it takes to get us out of it? I'm Ben Dominich. We'll be back next week with more to dive back into the fray.